the new Sennheiser Accentum Plus is here. We're gonna review it, but also compare it with the JBL Tour 1 M2 to see which one gives you more bangs for your 200 bucks. Namaste, we are DHRME, dumping headphones right into mustard environment. The Accentum has this little divot here right in the center of the headband, and we'll come back to why that is important later on. It does have a smoother adjustment of the headphones and the headband, whereas you'll get ratchets on the JBL. The Accentum definitely feels more premium. The JBL is not creaky by any means, but still not as noiseless as the Sennheiser. The case you get is more soft on the Sennheiser with loops to store the cables. I'd feel more comfortable with a hard shell case like the JBL gives you. And that hard shell case from JBL comes with a Velcro pocket to store cables. Now JBL is foldable and a bit more compact and the case and headphones are easier to transport. The Accentum Plus on the other hand, the cups swivel 180 degrees both ways. Now the way you use both of these headphones is with touch and buttons, so a hybrid setup. But we prefer the Sennheiser here though. On the JBL the touch is super sensitive. You can touch only for play, pause, and skipping track. And did we say the touch is super sensitive? It can even be activated using your throat when it's around your neck because the cups turn inwards. I would have loved to disable the touch single tap because it can get activated accidentally on the JBL. But to do that, you have to basically disable touch altogether. And the buttons only give you noise cancelling options and volume control, which is very limited. And there's this nice power and pairing slider button very similar to the Bose's QC series. And the Sennheiser can do everything the JBL can in terms of controls without the touch sensitivity issues. The only difference is that you adjust volume using touch gestures on the Sennheiser. Now the JBL advertised 30 hours of battery life with ANC on and 50 without. This is the number we got. And the Sennheiser, it advertises 50 hours and this is the number we got. I don't know what the number is yet because I'm testing the Sennheiser. Now, in terms of looks, the JBL has some shiny accents and it feels a little bit, I don't know, cheap feeling. Not like super cheap, but it does feel less premium than the Accentum Plus, which looks much nicer in our view. But sometimes choosing a partner is not just about how they look, but about how they feel. So the comfort on both of these is pretty good. Both are very light. I'd say that the Sennheiser is a bit lighter, but the JBL is plenty comfortable as well. The cups are decent, very soft and they have a nice padding around the headband. But the cups on the Sennheiser are much more spacious and reminded me of the Bose Quiet Comfort. There's reasonable padding on the crown and the pads and the Sennheiser has a divot which I talked about earlier in the headband leading to lower pressure on the crown and that really played out over longer periods of time. It looks like a small detail but it was interesting. Whereas the JBL has your traditional, you know, quite oval shape and it might be a problem for some heads but it was also comfortable for us. The cups on the Sennheiser do feel slightly bigger, accommodating my complete pinner, whereas the JBL wasn't really that big, but again, it was quite comfortable. And the Accentum Plus actually felt a bit more comfortable with glasses, and that could have to do with the shape of the headphones. All right, audio codex. The Accentum Plus supports AAC, APTX, APTX Adaptive. The JBL supports SBC and AAC only. And other than Codex, both of these can play audio over a wired connection. The JBL gives you a good old passive three and a half millimeter, whereas the Sennheiser can play audio over USB type C. In terms of stock sound, we'll first talk about the graphs and then our subjective experience. The biggest difference from a technical perspective are the ear gain, which is a bit more elevated on the JBL. The higher treble around 9K, which is boosted on the Accentum Plus, and the sub bass, which the JBL clearly has more of. Now, we tested with three songs. Number one was Overcompensate. And you know, JBL sounds a bit boomy on the lower end on this track, much more of the sub bass coming through as those graphs suggested. At the same time, I like the slight boost in the presence region, lifting the sound a bit. Vocals do recede a bit to the background. Now, I don't have perfect hearing, but overall the timbre of instruments, it sounded a bit off. Voices sounded a bit thin, but instruments sound punchy. The Sennheiser Accentum Plus, on the other hand, is much better with the timbre as most of Senni's products are. There's definitely an emphasis on bass. And the treble too, but a different part of the treble. Again, the mids are a bit lower in the mix, but it works with a song like this. For this song, the winner is the Sennheiser. Song number two, No Time To Die by Billie Eilish. Now, Sennheiser Accentum Plus sounded fine. 
the initial quiet part was okay but not as like moving or impacting no great instrument separation or space definite metallic edge on the breathier vocal parts at the crescendo it sounds like there's some clipping happening overall it was very staid and uninspiring the vocals sound much more forward on the JBL, even on the quiet part. The build up with the bass around the 2 minute 9 second mark is much more impactful due to that sub bass rumble. Overall, the voice clearly stands out in the mix, which makes this song much better. Despite that, the breathier parts don't sound quite as metallic on the JBL, even though they clearly do sound like that. Oh, and that clipping like effect at about 3 minute 20 seconds still exists. I guess none of these headphones can fix that recording. So for a tiebreaker, I turn to a classic. So do you want me to spit it out? The JBL's tuning manages to keep the voice in focus again throughout the busy part. The crashes and cymbals do end up very unimpressive sounding though, morphing into a sea of noise almost and not the nice kind of noise either. However, it's impressive that despite such poor instrument separation, the vocals stay in focus. The Sennheiser clearly does a better job on representing the drums. Surprisingly, the voices as well. Definitely our preference on this track. Okay, we won't leave you hanging. Here are some sound samples for you guys. In terms of customization, you get sound personalization on both of these headphones. The JBL has a hearing analysis test called Personify that analyzes your hearing to give you the best possible customized listening experience. Sennheiser has a personalized hearing test. Now, of course, you know we had to go and try these again. Again, Sennheiser's results were okay. I like these results better than the results on the Momentum 2 Wireless 4. Now what about JBL? Well, it kind of did well and not well at the same time, especially the very high frequencies, it way overdid it. And the thing is, it's all user input, right? So there's definitely going to be some error as I maybe lift my finger off too early or I'm not paying enough attention. Um, even though JBL's test seems more scientific with separate tests for the left and right ear, in real life, give me an EQ any day. The JBL has a more limited preset collection, but it does have a 10 point EQ that you can tweak compared to the Sennheiser's 5 band. And you're not limited to the 10 frequencies. You can move that puck around to tune a frequency in between. Oh, and JBL has many more features. Let's name them quickly. Rowan, take it away. Low volume dynamic EQ. That gives you a nicer sound at lower volumes. I leave this on. Then not one, but three spatial modes for movies, music, and games. I leave this off. A smart audio video mode for better audio video syncing. I leave this off again. And a volume limiter for a maximum volume of 85 dB. I leave this on and I wish every headphones had this feature or we're gonna end up with a generation of hearing impaired kids. There's also a left right balance slider, which is kind of nice, but also kind of useless at the same time, unless you have a lot of hearing difference between your left and right ears. ANC is very usable on the Sennheiser Accentum Plus. In fact, if you're listening to music or audio as you usually will be, you're going to be pretty satisfied. Compared to the JBL, there's not much in it. We would put both in tier A. Maybe the Accentum Plus slightly does worse at the low end and the JBL slightly worse at the higher end, but other than that, there's nothing in it. What we were surprised to see is that the Accentum Plus beats its bigger brother, the Momentum 4, quite clearly in terms of ANC. Now, wind noise cancelling works fantastically on the Sennheiser. There are tons of options, but I found that leaving it on max did a good job. To be honest, I didn't have many issues with the JBL Tour 1 M2 either in a light breeze. Transparency modes have gotten really good in recent times and the Accentum and Accentum Plus are proof of that. Both the Accentum Plus and the JBL are in the same tier, tier A. The levels that you hear are pretty decent on the Accentum, but it does have two disadvantages over the JBL. Number one, JBL has perceptibly lower white noise to the extent that is almost absent. 
And the JBL has a brighter transparency that makes the illusion of transparency work better. JBS also has the famous or infamous stock through feature. I personally don't see the point of it since all it does is limit the volume of the audio you're listening to and turn on ambient aware. Maybe it's for people who like music in the background only. The mode also gets activated if you enable the smart talk mode which automatically kicks in talk through once the headphones detect you speaking. Annoyingly, the JBL always defaults to ANC when you restart the headphones. The best feature that the JBL has on ANC is the silent now feature, which basically lets you use these headphones to mute the outside world. The headphones disconnect from your phone and turns on ANC. You can also set a timer for this to end as well as an alarm to wake you up at the end of it. Ideal if you just want ANC on a long flight, for example. Now, JBL has voice aware, turn on or off and adjust it between low, mid and high, which is basically side tone hearing your own voice. The Sennheiser can also do this during calls, the low, mid, high slider in the ANC setting. On JBL and Sennheiser, the default is transparency when you're on a phone call and you can't change this on the headphones. Sennheiser can mute calls automatically when headphones are removed and it works really well. Sennheiser has a comfort call feature as well. The best we could make of this is that the volume of incoming calls was slightly boosted, which was kind of cool, and we'd probably leave it on. Sennheiser also plays a tone when you get an incoming call, and the LEDs do a disco light to indicate an incoming call, and a red LED indicates that there's a running call. But check out our disco popsicles, icicles, and tests. Pop, pop, popsicle. Ice, ice, icicle. Test, test, testing. One, two, three. So what's the conclusion? JBL clearly wins this test. Aggressive with noise suppression and much more pleasant in breezy conditions. Sometimes the voice does cut a bit though, and that could be bothersome in certain situations, but not in our tests. JBL is also the winner in noisy conditions. The whooshing car sounds are much more audible on the Sennheiser Accent M Plus. But this is important. The Sennheiser isn't bad by any means. It's perfectly usable, but in a head to head, we would pick the JBL. All right, Fachmann controls. Both these headphones are the Fachmann's wet dream, but the Sennheiser is the wetter of the two. Who is writing these scripts? You can answer, hang up, reject, put it on hold, transfer calls and mute using the touch panel on the headphones themselves. I'm not sure I'd do all that via a touch panel, but hey, it's there if you need it. Not to be outdone, the JBL can do volume control using the buttons and mute the call using a long press on the right ear cup. You can change ANC mode on either using the headphones themselves, but you can use those options we talked about earlier. All right, let's talk smarts and extra features. There's multi-point on both, but JBL does not have a device list in the app. Sennheiser does, and we felt the Sennheiser was more stable, whereas the JBL felt a bit jittery at times. Now, the JBL has Google Assistant, Amazon Alexa, and native voice assistant support. Also, there's Google Fast Pair and Microsoft Swift Pair. Now, both apps are very clear. There's one scrolling list of stuff on the JBL and a couple of well-organized tabs for the Sennheiser. You know, it's not often that we say this, but these are both very good headphones. They're different, but great. And in some ways, very similar in terms of the price and also in terms of what you get. They're about 230 euros now. In terms of features, the JBL has got the Seni far outnumbered, but still, to be honest, apart from the touch surface sensitivity on the JBL, it also had some connectivity issues. There's also this audio skipping that happens on the Mac when in multipoint, which is quite annoying. I'd probably pick the Sennheiser. It just feels a little bit more premium. And apart from the slightly worse calls, the lack of foldability and white noise on transparency, I can't really fault it on anything. What about you, Kevin? Well, tough. It is a tough decision for me because I want to go with the Sennheiser, but just because of that white noise and transparency and the worst calls, I'm leaning towards the JBL. But because of the performance issues and the connectivity issues, I'm gonna have to stick with Sennheiser and put up with the white noise and slightly subpar phone call quality. But we don't put up with companies trying to influence reviews because we never accept money from companies whose products we review. That helps us bring you guys independent and unbiased reviews. And we'd love to continue doing that. So one way you can help us is to subscribe to the channel because apparently only 10% of you are. And the other thing, we already know that we have great YouTube members and patrons supporting us. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And again, a special thank you to Gamma Panda, Paula, and Hunter. You guys are next level. You've been touring the plus sized. And we've been DHRME. Dui. Check out our disco popsicles, icicles, and testing of LEDs and microphones. 
what else would it be?